What a striped bass look like on plane. There you go. There you go. That's what they look like. Hey guys, thanks for clicking on this one and I want to take a few seconds here and show you how I mark fish on plane. It's a big part of what we do. We spend a lot of time uh, cruising the usually the river channels and uh, shipping channels, fresh water, salt water, it's all the same. And we will kind of cruise the edge of those channels going up into the shallow water, across the channel and back. I usually run between 20 and 30 miles an hour. And I have through hull transducers now, but I did this for years and years and years with transom mount transducers. And I actually still have two transom mount transducers on here that I do use. I have more transducers than the average boat only because I do some testing for Airmar and Simrad, but I still use these uh, transom mounts. So I'm gonna show you how I set them up. It's a little technical. I hope uh, I can explain it so I don't, you know, bewilder some people and, and lose you guys on this one. But if you pay attention pretty closely, you'll see uh, how I do it. You're gonna need one of these, okay? And go to your transducer and do that. <laughs> okay? That is ugly, right? That is the key. I can probably go up a little bit. Right about there. So if you see, Get your front edge of your transducer just about a, I don't know, what is that? Maybe a quarter of an inch below the front or below the uh, the transom edge right there. And uh, yes, you might hit something. And once you have it a little bit below, tilt the following edge down a little bit. So as pressure water comes across the bottom here it, on the face of the transducer, it in increases the pressure against the face of that transducer squeezes out any air now a lot of transducers are not installed like that and the guys that uh spend a lot of time with rulers and levels and stuff to get it just right uh like to disagree with me on this one which is fine you know everyone's got their own way of doing it and instead of having my you know my transducers like this they want to set theirs actually the other way so as the boat planes out the transducer lays flat in the water and for some boats that's great if that works for you if you can mark fish at 25 30 miles an hour that way go for it it'll keep your transducer safer uh if you you almost will never hit anything that way because the boat is uh protecting your transducer as it plows through the water you know even when the boat is planed if you have your transducer like this when it levels out it's pretty safe you know i may damage my transducer but I haven't damaged one yet. I have hit stuff, uh, I, have, I have collected stuff on them, but if you don't tighten your bolts all the way down on the sides of your bracket, it will kick up, you know, if something hits it. This is an aggressive way to do it. When my boat is very level in the water, sometimes my arches are a little crooked because when I'm just drifting, my transducer is down a little bit, obviously, and I'll get crooked arches sometimes, but I need this to work when I'm running. So if you, if you do the traditional way, like a lot of people do, it's great under perfect calm, calm conditions and you can mark fish on plane. But if it's on the uh, left side, on the port side like this, and you make a right-hand turn, it'll come out of the water a little bit. If you're any chop at all, it can come out of the water a little bit. If you push your following edge down like this, especially on a uh, uh, installation like this, where I have it on a lifting strike. There's my other one on a lifting strike there. I have had very good success with this. This is the, let me see here, this is my fourth C Pro, and they've all had these same lifting strikes, and I've had great success with it. So on that side, I have my active imaging transducer. I use this for my side scan. Now, side scan doesn't work as well as, as regular chirp or traditional uh, sonar does on plane. It works a little better going slower, but I can mark bait schools at 25 miles an hour even 30 a little bit you know i don't really mark stripers with the side scan at that speed but i do mark bait very well uh it just looks cloudy it's no detail but i can tell it's bait all right over here i got my chirp transducer this is a 165 high wide by airmar it's an extra wide you can see the front is about a quarter of an inch this one might be a little more than a quarter inch below the bottom of the boat 
and the following edge is towed down slightly the same way as the other transducer now this has a kick up bracket if something does hit it it will pop the bracket up and save the transducer but of course you may hit something and destroy it i mean i haven't done it i don't think you will under normal circumstances because i haven't done it so if i haven't destroyed one i'm pretty sure you guys would be all right but the chances there if you whack something going fast enough you could ruin your transducer but with so many people asking me how i mark my fish on plane that is the key right there got to keep pressure across the face of that transducer squeeze out the air and even with it tilted down like this it actually helps a little bit because it looks slightly forward you know and you, you could even tow it a little further down than that you know don't be afraid like i said your arches might not be as pretty but you'll mark fish up to 30 miles an hour I'll even mark fish a little faster than that, but I like to run right between 20 and 30. If I start getting into some nice areas, I'll slow down a little more. When you look at this footage, it looks like the marks are very close together. These fish were actually spread apart over a long flat area. They look very close together because the boat is moving pretty fast. So the boat is moving quickly and all those arches look tight. When I drop off a plane, you'll see how they're much further apart than they actually appeared at first uh, glance as we're, as we're running. Uh, I'll come off a plane, you'll see the arches, I kind of turn back around to go through them and you can see the difference, what they look like when I'm running at 20, 23, 24 and when I drop down to 4 or 5 miles an hour, they turn back into arches. But when we're running, they're more like little dashes. I call them light bulbs now, even though they don't look like light bulbs, but way back in the day when I had the old interphase transducers, they looked more like light bulbs. So I just keep calling them light bulbs out of habit, I guess, out of tradition. But Thanks again for watching, guys. I really do appreciate your support. You guys are the best. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Please subscribe if you haven't. It really, really helps me out. A thumbs up really helps too. Even a thumbs down, that's cool. If you didn't like the video, you can do one of those. Stay safe on the water. Leave a few for me. Love you. Mean it. What a straight bass look like on plane. There you go. I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Ready? 24 miles an hour, 25. There they are. <laughs> oh my God. It looks like we were coming, starting to come at them anyway, but you can see how many more frequently we were seeing them and how small they looked. Top each other, just all scattered through here. looking for arches like that you won't really see them you got to uh, slow down to see them like that so <laughs> go wide open they look different all right you guys want to know what fish look like at speed we were running about 20 30 miles an hour and you saw we saw nothing here and we came across light bulbs that's what I call like that's what a school of striped bass look like at about 30 miles an hour so I dropped off a plane and now you can see what they look like. That's what they look like right there. Look at that guy, drop them down. Oh my goodness. All right, running out, the same old story. Started the channel, and we just find the channel. It's a good piece of structure that everyone can find, right? It's right on your chart. You can even find it on your phone. So we have our channel. And I'm gonna cruise the edge of that channel. I'm doing, uh, I'll do about, say less than 30. 25, usually trim the boat way down, and I'll crisscross the edge of the channel. I'll stay on the inside edge for a while. If I don't see anything, I'll move to the outer edge. Or sometimes we'll stand the inner edge going out and the other edge coming back in. And uh, we're not just running to a spot, we're looking right away. Sometimes we find what we need right at the ramp, you know, so always looking right away. So 
seeing some broken up paint. Those are stripers right there. We're seeing some some bait up here and some yeah. stripers right there. We're seeing some good stuff already. Yeah. Lots of bait. Lots of bait. Some stripers first. And uh, we get some, uh, some bunker up top. Yeah, big schools of bunker. Man, look at this. This is what we like to see. This is where we uh, jig those flutter spoons a lot, right around all this bunker. We're seeing some stripers here, seeing the shadows, see the returns right there. They don't look like giant fish, but those are stripers. All right, here we go. All right, grab your uh, spoons, guys. Here they are. Tons of fish, lots of fish. Lots of good marks here. Let's try to get at least one spoon down so we can get them close hanging around by us. Yeah, so we can keep them by us. Look at the screen, guys. Look at that screen. Tommy, you want in here? Wow, that is full. Oh, no. Somebody catch a I fish. Oh, yeah. I think I'm stuck. Yeah, you're stuck. Stuck on, stuck on you. Yeah, this fish you're is stuck going on a striker. <laughs> look at the size of this horse. Old school vertical. So how long we've been out here? How long we've been out here? That's uh, 30 seconds. 37 seconds. <laughs> Stop the boat 30 seconds. Oh, no. Hate to brag, but we'll, we will brag. <laughs> That's crazy, guys. Look at the size of this horse, cast. Look no, at don't go past, don't go past. Cap, that. look at him. It's a beauty, man. Don't go past the, uh, okay. the oh, oh, he, we'll call it the oh heck point, right? <laughs> look at this horse. Where's your drag too? Yours is at the, yeah, right on the, where it kind of wants to stop, right there. That is a horse, son. That fish has got shoulders. That's, this is old school at its best. Thank you, Captain Mike. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Vietnam veteran, you kidding me? I think this fish is as old as me. You're welcome on this boat before I'm welcome on this look boat. Look at it, look at him, look at him. Look at him, look at him. And what color spoon is that? It's the copy of the brand new copy. It is a brand Captain new special order. Team Old School pattern. Yes, it is. People at Nichols are awesome, man. They made these patterns for us. <laughs> Want to do an all copper spoon? First time we put one down? Honestly, right? First yeah, time we yeah, put one yeah, down? Yes, I haven't tried one yet. It's only a second time over now. Over this horse. That is a, that's a toad, man. That's a toad. Here, record this for me real quick. Dude, that don't is drop good. it. And just stay on me. <laughs> it's a good fish, man. Just keep the line tight. Keep yes, pulling. Sir. Don't let it go slack. Pull, yes, pull, sir, pull, yes, sir, pull. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ready? Cameraman. Oh! Oh, yeah. <laughs> That is a beaut on the copper. It's a Team Old School pattern. You can get it at the Nichols uh, website. Go to their Ben Parker spoons, and we got two colors. So we're just trying out. And they're doing good. <laughs> Honestly, guys, first time we put them down, but you know, we put them down in a pile of fish. To be honest, I'm sure any color would work right here, but this one seemed to whack one first. So let's get her back as soon as we can. Very nice. Look at that fish, son. You want to hold her? Right. It is a nice Yay. fish. Come close with that. Come here. That's how you fuck. Look at that. Good job, John. Good job. Thank you, Captain. Nice. Woo! Look at that screen. That's it.